get the wiring wrong on a VFD circuit and you could destroy the drive or cause interference that knocks out other systems in the building. But this isolator from Skami has a secret function built in and it could be the difference between a smooth shutdown and an expensive failure. The use of variable frequency drives or VFDs is growing fast and for good reason. By matching motor speed to actual demand, VFDs can cut energy use by 20 to 50% in fans, pumps and compressors. So we can see by turning this fan down from 50 hertz down to 25 hertz the energy reduces by two-thirds with rising energy costs and tougher efficiency rules vfds are becoming a go-to solution slashing emissions extending equipment life and often paying for themselves in under two years but retrofitting a vfd into an existing installation isn't as simple as just wiring it in and powering it up you've got to think beyond the drive like where your isolation or disconnect points are and whether maintenance teams can safely isolate the equipment when needed miss those details and you risk falling foul of wiring and safety regs or worse putting people in danger a smart install isn't just about saving energy, it's about making sure the whole system plays by the rules and keeps everyone safe. To put this all to the test, we've built a rig, not just any rig, one that moves serious air and cools your tea in seconds. We've got a proper industrial fan driven by a WEG variable frequency drive, which we sourced from our friends at Crompton Controls. And we've fitted it with a few extras, which we'll explain later. And over here, uh, looking deceptively ordinary, is the isolator from Skami but don't be fooled it's hiding a built-in trick that could be the difference between a clean shutdown and a costly mistake and before we get carried away with the rig it's worth a quick revisit to how vfds work and the problems they can cause a vfd takes in our regular ac main supply in this case three phase 400 volts at 50 hertz rectifies it to dc and then chops it back into ac at a variable frequency and voltage in our demo rig the drive can output an ac waveform from 3 to 55 hertz giving us granular control over the motor's speed. Inside the drive, you can tweak hundreds of parameters to manage things like acceleration, torque, direction. But there's a downside. That clever electronic switching that creates the synthetic output also generates a significant amount of electromagnetic interference, or EMI. On the input side, filters help clean that up, but they also generate quite a bit of leakage current. We'll cover that in a future video. On the output side though, the interference travels straight down the cable to the motor, and that's where the trouble starts as the interference radiates from the cable. That's why it's critical to get the cable type and routing right. In most cases, using a high quality screened cable can significantly reduce interference. Which brings us to the first clever feature in this Skarmy isolator, a built-in way to terminate that screen properly. They've made it easy to connect the screen through from incoming to outgoing cables, and that means we can use standard plastic cable glands in instead of the more expensive metal EMC types. We've seen how screened cable and smart terminations can reduce interference, but there is a lot of nuance when it comes to the real world installations and EMC. So if you've had any headaches on installations, had things in the building or control system, mysteriously shut down then please drop a note in the comments to share your experience they can help other people if they're experiencing difficulties now here's another issue to watch out for something known as slamming that's when a motor is disconnected from the output of a vfd using an isolator while the drive is still powered up and running this sudden loss of load can create high voltage transients that reflect straight back into the vfd and that's bad news because those spikes can hit the output stage hard leading to serious serious and sometimes permanent damage. The key to avoiding slamming is this set of auxiliary contacts located inside the isolator. These contacts open around 60 to 100 milliseconds before the main isolator contacts and I confirmed that with a quick bench test using our oscilloscope. You can see the time difference clearly on the trace and that early break is critical. The drive monitors this auxiliary contact and when it sees it go open circuit it instantly shuts down the output stage and this is done using a feature called ST or safe talk off. On this WEG drive, STO is an optional add-on. To enable this, we fitted the safety functions module, which plugs into the top of the drive and takes a 24 volt DC supply from the digital interface card. The auxiliary contacts are wired back to the STO input using a shielded signal cable routed alongside the screened motor cable. The auxiliary contact connects using crimp terminals, ones I would call female receptacles, because that's what it says in the catalogue. But when we asked the community, we got some various answers as to what these are called. Some people call them spade terminals, other people call them fast on terminals. So let us know in the comments what you would call them and hopefully we can sort
solve that argument once and for all. Right, let's run a quick demo to show how this setup works in practice. First, we can confirm that the WEG motor drive recognizes the safety module by checking for a one in the parameter 28 setting. We let the motor spin up to full speed, then operate the isolator. And as you'll see, the drive instantly responds and shuts down, reporting a fault code. The STO overrides all of the other internal settings, directly shutting down the power electronics in the drive's output. It should only be used as an emergency input. To reset the fault, I recycle the power. But notice something important here. I can't clear the fault code until the isolator has been reclosed. That means the drive won't try to operate with the output stage open. Once the isolator is closed again, I recycle the power and now I can restart the motor. It's these two features, the auxiliary contacts for enabling safe torque off and the ease of connecting screened motor cables that SCARMI uses to define this as an EMC compliant isolator. It's part of the TP series, one of the most widely used isolator ranges out there, available in current ratings from 16 to 160 amps and in both emergency and general use versions. I see these installed everywhere from railways to air conditioning units and, and it's no surprise. A few months ago I was lucky enough to visit the SCARMI factory in Italy where this range is built on a fully automated production line with one unit completed every 45 seconds. The recessed operating handle is protected from damage. Internal mounting points are positioned outside the ceiling gasket to preserve its IP66 rating rating and there are loads of installer friendly touches like clear marking areas for cable entries. I've left a link in the description to the full TP series range. Earlier in the video we touched on the subject of earth leakage currents. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because soon we've got a video coming that dives into all aspects of earth leakage currents including the challenges that are caused by variable frequency drives.